In this question, we've gone ahead and have drawn a free body diagram that represents the forces that are acting on the crate. Notice we've tilted our y and x axis, and in our free body diagram we have shown the gravitational force mg pointing straight down. We have the normal force that is pointing straight up, that's basically the surface of the ramp pushing up on the crate, and that force is always perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. We also have the force given in the question that was indicated by the letter F that's pointing horizontally to the right. And what we're going to do is organize our three forces into a table showing the X and the Y components of each of those three forces. Now, it's important to understand that when we do the X component, we will be using the cosine of an angle to represent that X component. And when we do the Y component, we'll be using the sine of the angle. But we must make sure that when we measure our angles, we measure them from this positive x-axis right here. Furthermore, when we measure our angles from that positive x-axis, if the angle is measured counterclockwise, it is considered to be a positive angle. And if the angle is measured counterclockwise, it is considered to be a negative angle. So for example, if we look at the normal force and we measure the angle relative to the positive x-axis, then the angle that we could use for the normal force is 90 degrees. So when we go into our force table here, we will represent the x component by Fn times the cosine of 90 degrees, and the y component will be Fn times the sine of 90 degrees. Now we turn our attention to the gravitational force Mg which again is pointing straight down in our free body diagram. Now, we were told that the angle of the incline was 30 degrees. And since this angle right here is 90 degrees, then we know that this angle right here must be 60 degrees. And we know that because 60 degrees plus 30 plus 90 equals 180, which is the sum of the angles of a triangle. And now, when we measure the angle for the gravitational force, again, make sure that you measure it relative to the positive x-axis, which is highlighted in blue. So that angle will be as follows. We start measuring in a counterclockwise direction. When we go that far, that's 180 degrees. But to get all the way over to mg, we would have to add that 60 degrees. So the grand total for the angle all the way around to mg would be 180 plus 60 degrees. So that means that the angle for the gravitational force will be 240 degrees. So we will represent that as mg cosine of 240 degrees for the x component, and then the y component will be mg times the sine of 240 degrees. Finally, we need the angle for the force marked F. Now we might recognize that we have two lines here that are parallel, and then a third line cutting through them. And in that situation, these corresponding angles, both here and here, are congruent. So this angle right here is going to be 30 degrees, but again, be careful. You're measuring that angle from the positive x-axis. And you could measure it by going all the way around to f, and that would be a positive angle, but I think it's more convenient to measure it this way to get to f, it's much shorter, Again, that angle is 30 degrees, but because we're measuring it clockwise relative to the positive x-axis, so this angle right here will indeed be negative 30 degrees. So in our force table for F, we can write the x component as F times the cosine of negative 30 degrees, and then for the y component will be F times the sine of negative 30 degrees. Now, we have left another row here in our table, and we've marked it R. R stands for the resultant, which is the sum of the X component forces and the Y component forces. And we probably don't have too much room to write that in here, so we're going to actually come over here, and we're going to write that the resultant for the X direction is going to equal the sum of the components. So we'll have Fn cosine of 90, plus mg cosine of 240, plus f cosine of negative 30. 
And then Newton's second law tells us that we set the sum of these forces equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, let's not forget that in this question, the crate is moving at constant speed. So constant speed would indicate that the acceleration is in fact zero. So we can actually plug zero in for the acceleration, which is actually, of course, going to make the right side of the equation equal to zero. We'll look at the y components as well. So basically the same equation, but we'll be using the sine instead of the cosine. And again, this will be set equal to mass times the acceleration, which is zero. Now what we want to do is plug in the known values. We know the mass of the crate is 100 kilograms. So that means for the m value here and here, we can plug in 100 kilograms. And then also for g, we know the value is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's plug in the known values. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the known values. The next important thing to notice is that the cosine of 90 is equal to zero degrees. So you have Fn times zero, which basically causes this to zero out. We would then pick up our calculator and type in this calculation here, 100 times 9.8 times the cosine of 240, and you're going to get negative 490 newtons plus, and then the cosine of negative 30 degrees is about 0.866, and then this would be still multiplied by f. Notice we can actually solve for the f force, which is what we want to do in part a. So we'll add the 490 over to the other side, and then divide both sides of the equation by 0.866, and we can see that f is equal to 566 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part a, and we can use that result to find the normal force in part b. The sine of 90 is equal to 1, so you have Fn times 1, which is just Fn, plus, let's type in this quantity into our calculator, and when you do so, you're going to get a negative 848.7 newtons, plus F, which we just figured out was 566 newtons, times the sine of negative 30, Let's do the 566 newtons times the sine of negative 30. So now we have Fn. Notice here you're just going to have a minus 848.7 newtons. Typing this into my calculator, I got minus 282.9 newtons equals zero. Let's combine these like terms together. So you have Fn minus 1131.6 newtons equals zero, and then finally add the Fn to the, excuse me, add the 1131.6 to the other side, and you will get, when you round, a final answer for the normal force of 1,132 newtons.